Whoever asks first gets it. One to ten, how excited are you for this fight? Man? I'm so excited. I mean, this is an unbelievable card from top to bottom. So many great fights. Obviously, you saw Richardson Hitchens up there. I was loving it. I wanted it to carry on. You know, Baumgartner's in a great fight. The main event's going to be a thriller. Great fights for Ramler Ali, Sky Nicholson. You know, you've got Yankee Riviera. You've got Harley Medeiros. Uh, you've got Aaron Aponte as well. It's a, a great night of action on Saturday. It's almost impossible to say, but is this fight more significant for Amanda as opposed to the Cater Tater fight? You know what? I looked at Erica Cruz up there. I think she's, you know, she's ice cold. And I'm a bit worried for Amanda Serrano in this fight. And actually, as much as I want Taylor Serrano 2 to happen, Erica Cruz is our fighter. So I'm gunning for an Erica Cruz victory on Saturday night and a big upset. And I think he's going to be a toe-to-toe -to -toe walk. Eddie, with the situation with Pro Park, does it make more sense maybe if Cruz did win and do that in the free arena and then look maybe in September look, for you know, Serrano again? I woke up this morning to national news in Ireland. You know, and they're talking about it on the mainstream media. I make one thing clear, you know, there's some very clever wording around from their side saying that the rental is only a little bit more expensive than Wembley. It's not the rental, it's the costs required that they require us to implement to stage the fight there. Um, I'm not having a go at them. I'm just saying for what the fighters want to make and what I want to pay them in the fight, it's not possible. So we'll carry on those conversations. There's been a lot of people reaching out today, but it's all irrelevant. That fight's not signed yet. And ultimately, until we see what happens on Saturday night, then we'll look at the future. Is there still a possibility though that it does go on for the same category? I think, look, at this stage, May 20th is Katie Taylor's next fight day. We run out of time. So we've made our moves to go to the free arena, but there has been national uproar. And we'll see what happens over the next few days. Hey, Eddie, let me ask you. Um, I know Better Be Able looked great this past weekend, or last weekend, I should say. Um, do you think he's still the same exact fighter? Well, he's 38 now. Do you yeah. think he's slowing down a little bit? No, I think he's the same exact fighter. You know, people say that Better Be Able is slow. People say that his footwork's not great. I actually dis disagree. I think he's fast. I think his feet work footwork is unbelievable. I think he's very clever. I think he breaks you down. I just think that Dimitri Bivol beats him. Eddie Frox, you seen Gordon, you spoke yesterday on the MMA Hour. You are now potentially exploring an option. Do you want to speak with this team and maybe bring him on board? No, I was just saying it for the MMA Hour, to be honest with you. Um, no, look, I spoke to Francis Ngarn, who's a fine gentleman. Would love to work with him. Uh, I told him that you, know, you have to navigate this choppy sea of boxing. And uh, we would love to look at an Anthony Joshua fight. He's got the Tyson Fury fight as well. Ultimately, you know, AJ's ambition is to become world heavyweight champion again. That doesn't involve Francis and Garner, but if there isn't an opportunity to fight for the world heavyweight title, we would be willing to explore that this summer. It's a mega fight. Um, obviously, it's a fight that would, would create huge attention worldwide. But first things first, Francis Joshua, April 1st, O2 Arena, press conference next week. Away from AJ, do you may not maybe look at him as an opponent first things first, like a Derek Chisora? No, I think, I think Francis and Ngannou will want to and should want to move into the biggest fight possible. And there's only two of them, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. They're the biggest fights out there for him. Maybe Deontay Wilder, but Dillian White would take that fight, but I think he's going to look to maximise his position, make as much money as possible, and he wants the biggest fights out there. Do so you struggle with that, that if or most people will say when he loses, if he goes straight into a Tyson Fury or an AJ? No, I think, I think he's only really got one shot. No, I think if you lose from there, you come back, you can potentially rebuild, but this is his opportunity. And, and you know, from speaking to him, I think that's what he wants to do. What do you think of, of Francis' skills overall, just his striking ability? I think at the end of the day, he's not going to be able to compete with the skills of a boxer, but one thing he can do is punch. He's very heavy-handed, so he has to fight a style that he has a chance, you know, like a Fury fight is very awkward for him. He could be messed around, and I don't think that's the right style for him. An AJ fight, a Wilder fight, a Dillian White fight, where people are prepared to trade and, and can get hit by heavy shots, it makes it more compelling. In your opinion, history in the female boxing? In my opinion, yes. Uh, I've been making history in female boxing for a long time. We're doing it again on Saturday night. We're not here to tick boxes. We're not here just to look good by putting female boxing on. Female boxing is here by its own ability and its own demand. You know, we'll be sold out in here on Saturday night. We just sold out the big room for Taylor Serrano. These are great fights, great champions, and we'll be invested heavily in women's boxing. Eddie, we saw, we saw uh, Frank Warren announce Joyce Zhang today after yeah. Zhang, somebody you work with. Yeah. Talks about making that fight. How easy or difficult was it? Time? Yeah, it was, you know, again, a great relationship with George Warren. Uh, they wanted to make that fight. Um, Zhang had a situation with us where we had matching rights on his fights moving forward. Uh, I spoke to George Warren. Zhang wanted to make that fight. Um, I was happy with the offer that was made to Zhang. Uh, me and George got the final bits over the line. I think it's a really good fight. This seems to be, for Zhang at least, a much more of a, a 
win-win scenario for him. If he wins, he beats somebody, Joe Joyce, who everybody sees as the top five heavyweight, cements himself back in there, whereas Joyce, not necessarily the same, but where does Jean go if he's successful? I mean, he's in a great position that he's, you know, he's at the back end of his career, but he can really punch. I mean, I think everybody, including Zile Zhang, uh, is going to struggle with the work rate of, of Joe Joyce. And Joe Joyce will overrun Zile Zhang, but he can really punch with the back end. And Joe Joyce will be open, as always, to get hit flush on the chin. It's just people talk about how good Joe Joyce's chin is. He's never really fought a massive puncher other than potentially Daniel Dubois that didn't really hit him on the chin, strangely, in that fight. So I think he's a massive favourite against Zile Zhang. But Zhang can really punch with the backhand. And if he times him onto one, I think he'll be interesting. But obviously Joe is, with his style uh, and against a much older man, he's a big favourite in that fight. Eddie, 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 Eddie. Pergovic, what's the latest with Philly? Um, he's been asked to have an interim world title fight against Andy Ruiz. We'd like to make that fight. Obviously, Ruiz is looking at the Wilder fight as well. We've spoken to Tom Brown. There's some back and forth. I don't think Andy Ruiz will take the fight against Philip Hergovic, but that's what's been ordered, and we're exploring that.